hello and welcome to today's video it's looking at sizing in watercolour painting it's an important thing and we'll take a look at how it affects paper and how we can revive watercolour paper where the sizing may have gone wrong in some way just as an example I've had this paper for 20 years and uh, didn't use it came to use it a week or two ago and painted on it but it was like painting on blotting paper it literally soaked up the paint before you could get it onto the uh, actual paper so it weren't really very good for spreading out or anything like that so first of all we'll look at what sizing does on paper like this and then we'll do a little experiment to see whether we can revive a piece of this paper so what exactly is sizing and what does it do well let's imagine with paper right that they're made up of lots of little strands like that that intertwine into one another to make your paper an individual strand let's make it i mean we'll, we're talking at the microscopic level here so that's your strand there what sizing does paper is quite susceptible to water it, it disintegrates into a pulp if you put enough water on it what sizing does is produces a a coating round it that is waterproof so water cannot penetrate it and it makes it a more robust uh, thing to be used and until that were invented it were difficult to be able to use anything for paper so that were a real step forward and it's generally uh, traditionally it's gelatine that's used but there are modern chemicals that are used that are water resistant that go around that now the process of putting sizing into um into the paper when it's being manufactured at, at the first level is called internal sizing that means it's being put in while they're making the actual paper itself before it dries and becomes a piece of paper after that imagine this is your paper they do a second type of sizing and that is basically an outer surface sizing like that it sits on top and it might be on both it, more often than not is on both sides but on some papers they just put it on one side so you you that's all that's all sized on the inside like that the internal and this is an external sizing and that's for a particular reason it's also called tub sizing that now the reason why they have this external sizing is the idea of especially watercolor paint is that you apply a blob of paint like that on it and it sits on top of this sizing rather than going into the paper like that once it's in that paper you will not get that out and that's what the problem was with the painting i showed you before it was the external sizing had failed and it had allowed the paint to seep into the paper and really it should just sit on top of the sizing the paint 
So what we're going to try and do is resize this top part onto the paper that we've got so that it sits on it nicely. And I'm going to show you how to do that, how to do some tub sizing. So join me when I uh, make a start with that process. So to resize uh, the paper, what will we need? I'm going to do it at this size because it's a lot more convenient for the filming. But this is the same type of paper as what I did the painting on. It's from the exact same batch. You'll need a bowl of water that's warmish, not boiling hot. Your paper. And in this case I'm going to have like a control system that's not got any sizing on it. And you'll need some gelatin in, in supermarkets. Uh, it, it comes either in um, little squares or it comes in little granules. This is a granule one. And something to stir it when you're putting it in the water. So that's what we'll do next. We'll, we'll make up the gelatine solution. Right, I've already put the warm water into the little bowl. I don't want it right to the top because obviously I'm going to be putting other things in it. But, you know, but at least halfway up the bowl. And uh, I'm now going to just literally pour that in. And then it's, it's just one satchel. Or it may be one or two uh, leaves if you're using leaves. But it's... Once you poured it in, it's in warm water and you start stirring. Now I'm going to be stirring with this for a while, so I'm going to go quiet and I'm going to do a let it uh, speed, do a a fast forward kind of thing. So that is the gelatine water prepared. What I decided that I'm going to do is have a, a blank test piece that's original as a control. I'm going to dip one in directly into the water and then give it a second dip once it's dry. So half of it. And I'm going to do another one where I don't dip it, I paint it on. So one side's going to have one coat and the other side will ju uh, I'll have two coats. Obviously for that process I'll need a brush. Right, let's see if we can dip our first piece. This is fully going to be submerged, so I'm going to put that on top at first. And I'm going to dip it under. So what I haven't put out is, because I don't want it sticking to this, I need some greaseproof paper. Where have I put my greaseproof paper? I'll be back in a moment. Right, I put some greaseproof paper down onto the surface here so that when I take this out, it won't stick to the surface because uh, it's pretty sticky stuff, this uh, gelatine, when it uh, wants to be. So I'm going to get that out. I'm going to put that there. Just brush over it because there's some little bits of... Uh, obviously in a proper industrial environment they use proper chemicals but um, I'm going to leave that for a while now. Your next one to do is brushing it. So I'm going to move this a little bit further over so I've got a space to brush it and I'm going to brush all over this. So Let's use his brush. It might be that it might be a better process to brush it. 
but you're only um, two sides in it, which is the surface. The other one might be a bit, a bit too much. What I've done on that, but this is all part of the experiment. It's time to let all that settle and dry, and we'll be back later when these have properly dried uh, we'll give them another coating and then dry them off and we'll see how they work right we're at this stage where I've put a second coat on I've dipped that on a second occasion and I've put brushed over this side on a second occasion and we'll see whether that makes any difference really so I'm going to put these to one side and I'm going to get a full piece of paper and I'm going to I think I'm going to brush this one because obviously I can't put a full piece and dip it in there I'd need a much bigger bowl so I'm going to brush some of this other paper to use this up while the test pieces are drying, I'm just going to put this piece of paper together with uh, brushing it. But I want to show you the technique so that uh, we can get it right. Now what we don't want is, is big pools of uh, uh, in random areas. We need to have a nice even stroke, as though you're varnishing something. Nice even strokes. and not not too many brush strokiness in it now they've dried apart from this one which I gave a, a second dip into it's still drying that we can start applying paint to the different pieces of paper this one is the control piece of paper that doesn't have any sizing added to it that's the original piece so we'll do that first to show you what it looks like um, it doesn't really matter what paint we're using I'm just gonna get a nice wet juicy brush of paint and uh, apply it to this one which is the one without the substrate and as soon as you the it grips it straight away you just you, you've got little or no time whatsoever with it look can you see how that that should fade away but it doesn't so it, it's literally gripping it so that's that that's the test piece right let's have a go with our piece that we've painted uh, we'll start with the one that we've uh, painted once with gelatine and see how that works. Instantly I can feel an absolute difference. And when I go over it, yeah, I can dissolve it totally. And we'll come back to that in a bit and we'll see if we can do some lifting off it. We may be able to. So let's do the second one. That's this one that's had two coats of paint on it. Now obviously if that's worked, this is more than likely going to work, but it's just that extra bit of protection. So let's... a bit more in like that and then adding some water to yeah totally dissolves it and you can get edges and all sorts of things like you should be able to with uh, watercolour painting uh, soft edges and Uh, hard edges 
and if I wanted probably I could take this right back so this one may just be dry so let's just do exactly the same as we've just been doing get a nice juicy brush and we'll do it on the first dipped one now mm, that seems to be reacting pretty much similar to that one but let's have a look to a lesser degree it, it has helped it but as you can see uh, there's, there's like crazing in it where in some areas it's seeped in and on, in some areas it's uh, stayed on top so I'm not so sure about this I think this one wins over this one just putting a, a sizing over the uh, surface rather than dipping it but we'll we'll try the second one see see how that goes it might be that it needed two dips that feels a little bit better Uh, see if we can soften it out now you, you, I can't really soften it out as, as well and again that crazing is coming through so for me um, dipping it is not the solution so I'm going to put that to one side you can see that's, that's, that's exactly what it was doing in the painting it go it will go in crazy in, uh, crazy in like that so i'm going to put that to one side as a not a failure but it, it, it's a good test but um not the desired response really let's put that to one side now we're left with these two the test piece that has none and the test piece that i've brushed once and then twice so what we're going to do is do a glaze over every one of them and a lift over every one of them so let's start with this one now this should this should be okay it's just the the crazing that happened on the painting were hard to control and again it's it's it, it's within milliseconds it's already uh, decided that it ain't gonna play ball with me and I'm I'm having to work really fast to get that to work right so It's okay, but it's leaving a, a really heavy line. Right, let's now see if we can um, take some of this away by just uh, using water. I'll tap it off a little bit. And as you can see, it's, it's just not, not happening. That's because it's going straight into the paper. And it don't matter what you might say oh well it's a staining color or whatever it doesn't matter what color you use it's it's locking into the paper so it, yeah that's pretty much what i expected uh, it's it's not bad at glazing over it but it will not lift so let's put that to one side there and let's have a look at this um when you add more size to a piece of paper or a paper that's uh, what's called hard sized it doesn't tend to glaze very well uh, because it lifts from the other piece of paper 
So let's now have a go with this. Actually, that's gone on quite nicely. I'm applying it quite thickly, but um, and see how it like allows you straight away to blend, and I can take it even down even more. And there you go. Right, let's see if I can now um, take some of this out by just adding water I should be able to and yeah look it's lifting straight away I may need to uh, put a piece of uh, paper towel over that it's almost gone right back to the paper that if you look and that's that's how I want paper to really respond and that's down to that extra layer of brushed on paper uh, brushed on sizing the gelatine that we added to it very quickly uh, it's a bit academic this really um, same thing I'm gonna uh, put that on the uh, put a glaze on there I'm going to feather it out and I'm going to test uh, with water on this one that's had two lots of brushing on it yeah you can lift it right back to the paper virtually If I had some tissue paper, I'd be able to uh, lift it right off that. And just a little bit, bit of tissue paper here. See if you can lift it. Yeah. As I thought, it's gone right back. So it depends on how much liftability you want. You might want to brush once, or you might want a second coat. But for me, this is this is the solution to the problem that I had with me painting earlier. Where I, where I was struggling to apply the paint to the surface. Add some gelatine to it uh, as a, a sizing and it will uh, react like a, a normal piece of watercolour paper that we use on a day-to-day -day basis. And you can do this not only to watercolour paper but to any paper that doesn't have an awful lot of sizing. Here's a quick painting of the resized paper. It's worked out really well. So, I really hope that this has been something that you've found interesting. It's definitely something I like to look at. Uh, how paper reacts is really important to us as artists. So, thank you for being here and we'll see you in another video coming soon.